Good morning. Today we are going to be using the cv.jet library within Max to calculate what we call flow, but I use it as a sort of velocity value within a video. To get started, we're going to need to bring in our webcam feed. So I'm going to do cv.jet.qt.grab. Got my toggle. Got my metro. I need to open my camera. Uh, Jet.p window. And hopefully, simple as that. Open, bang. There I am. Now, there are a few important additions we need to add here. Now, import. Important. First important one is in jet.qt.grab we need to add what is called the unique attribute. So unique one. And what this does is every time that our webcam reports it's sending a new frame, jet.qt.grab will send a bang. Now that means that this becomes almost the controlling metro after our initializing one here. And that's important later on when we're actually visualizing the flow in the in an image because it would jutter. It wouldn't be smooth without it. Next, I'm going to add two add true boxes. And with these, we're going to control adapt and dimensions. Now, I'm not going to go over these in great detail because I have done a, a webcam tutorial before. But what this means is that we can lower the resolution of the webcam. I'm going to take it all the way down to one 160 by 120 just because this is going to be really processor intensive later on. You can see here I've gone a bit boxy and that's exactly what we want. Uh, let's drag these all the way a bit so it's a bit neater. Select all. Uh, I'm also going to add another important here because it can be a nightmare to change the resolution after you're doing all the CPU intensive stuff. And then simply we're going to go into cv.jet.hsflow. Now in Mac 7 we have the great new package manager and involved in that is, maybe let me go back to home, it should be on the home stage, uh, home page, there's the cv.jet library by Jean-Marc Peltier. And what this is, this is a really good visualization package for uh, computer vision, it's really good for tracking, is really mathematically heavy and it does all the work that we we don't want to so install it have a play about with the file browser and all the examples all his all the help files are superb with the uh, package so with cv.jet.hsflow if we open up the help file for it you'll see that pretty much everything we need is already made we're going to take the rgb to luma the hsflow this unpack and the visualizer. And we're also going to take this uh, oh, this little threshold here. Now, I'm not going to go through all the uh, the mass involved of how it works, but it uses something called the horn chunk method. There's a great Wikipedia article about this. And it's just a way of gathering flow in an image while keeping it very smooth. And that's why it's favorable for me in this little tutorial because it means that there's no jagged uh, movements. It, it's really smooth throughout the entire image. My understanding of the general gist is that what it's doing is it's looking at pixel to pixel, frame to frame over three different stages. So it's saying, has this pixel changed? Yes. Has it changed again? Okay, what's the mean of that? And then you're getting this smooth transition through images. Don't save. So I paste that in. So what I have now is my JIT RGB to Luma and that's because it only accepts grey scale and that's really important if you're doing this manually we've got this uh, value here which is the is, is the threshold and I'll visualize this for you in a second what I'm going to add here is a load message of 0 0.01 
because that's the sort of value that I want to be playing with every time that I load this patch. Then we have the actual cv.jet.hs flow where all the math is happening inside and it's comparing pixel to pixel frame to frame of our live image. And then we've got something a bit more fancy here from Jean-Marc which is just a visualizer for us. So if we copy down our jet.p window here, do it twice, we get two outputs. One that is red and green and the other that is yellow and blue. And that's for left and right or up and down. Uh, so it is right red, left green. And then on the other side it's blue up, yellow down. But for the sake of this I'm just going to stick with horizon because once you know how to do it with one, you can do it with them all. We're not actually going to use this, but it's just nice to have it visualized for us at the site. Now, cv.jet.hsflow outputs a two field matrix. In the, on the first plane it's giving us the horizontal and on the second it's giving us the vertical. Hence the unpack here. So now, if you were to look at these separately, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. What do you have? You have just two grayscale matrix that are really focusing on the up and down and left and right. But we want the values from this. So I'm going to do the jet.3m, which reports the 3ms, the min, the max, and the mean of a matrix. So we're going to ignore the second and then the dump out for now. And you can see we have min, mean, max. And these all refer to the left and right movements within our image. So if we add three messages, we will get three different values. And that is min, mean, max. You can see here, so, so the fastest moving pixel it's saying is going about 5, and the slowest is going negative 5, and that's for our left and our right. And you can see with the mean that's looking over the entire image, we're getting this smooth ramp of a float going between a negative and positive number, depending on which way I'm going. And as simple as that, I have a, a, an average velocity or movement throughout this image, depending on what's happening. Now, it tends to be working really, really small float, float values. So what I like to do is scale it up a bit. And I know on average it goes from about negative five to five as the, the rough mean uh, totals. Now I'm gonna turn them into zero and into one, just to give me a nice uh, zero to one float scale. So now if I added a float to the end of that, we should see that I have, uh, depending on what's happening, wherever I start moving, then we'll start getting a number depending on which way I'm going. Now, I have a little patch that I made earlier that can help us visualize this. That I'm gonna bring in just now. So I have what's called pdraw here. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna draw the values that we send it. Uh, so into here I'm just going to put 240. So now we have a line that depending on which way the, the flow is going in the uh, video, the box will move. So you can see here it averages around 0 or 0.5, so halfway through. And if I shove the go right, it goes right. If I go left, it goes left. And quick as that, we've taken a value. Uh, scaled it and now we've got some sort of interactivity coming out of it and you can do the same with the horizon and then you've, you can start working out midpoints and flow points through the object depending on where busyness is. Now if I undo this unique just to show you why the important flags are there, reopen our camera, what you'll see, oh, let me This also inadvertently is visualizing why it's important to downscale your resolution. Because even what I would class as a really powerful laptop doesn't like all those pixels. Now you can see this is a flickering image and that's because it's running on the metro scale that I set rather than the metro scale of my camera. 
So when we add in our unique attribute, suddenly the camera becomes the controller for when HS Flow receives a message. And it's just little things like that that are important to remember because sometimes it can be really confusing as to why uh, why your patch isn't going as smooth as you think it should be. So now we go cool as that. We've got now I've got the smooth flow again, and on my visualizer I've got a line or how the flow in the image is.